In one of my recent videos, I showed the open baffle subs that I built and also how impressive I thought the base was. So that got me thinking about something called infinite baffle. And that's actually a step up if you can do it in your room. And that's where you take the woofers and you mount them in the wall rather than building a box for them. So what you're watching right now is me cutting the plywood to make the baffles for the uh, woofers to mount in. I'm going to have two in each one and I'm going to have two in total, one on the right and one on the left. And I already picked out a place in the wall where I can put them and how big they need to be. Now, I should say while you're watching this, I'm not doing this in the best possible way. A better way to do this would be to take that half inch plywood that's on the front and fasten it to the three quarter inch plywood panel on the back before cutting the holes. And now I should say that I'm sizing these holes so that the woofers mount on the back and won't go in from the front. I need these circles that I'm drawing here for two reasons. The first is so that I can cut out the center with the jigsaw rather than doing that with the router. And the second is to make it possible so that I can line up the top panel when I glue that on. And then the flange of the woofers that I'm going to be using has a lip and I need to cut a recess for that to fit in. That's what I'm doing right here. And like I said before, here I'm cutting it out with a jigsaw and then I can glue on the top panel using that mark that I have there to line it up properly. Then I drove in a few pins to keep it lined up and put on some clamps and let that dry. I changed up the bit in my trim router to one that has a bearing so that it will follow the precise cut I did before in the faceplate and then trim away the rest of that three quarter inch plywood underneath. And then I changed the bit again to one that chaffers and I ran that around the edge. With all that done, you can see how it fits. The back plate goes in against the flange and it clears that rubber surround. I'm going to be mounting this in the same way that I've been mounting the plywood panels in the room. And that's with screws, so that's what I'm drilling these countersinks for. After a quick sanding, I brought it outdoors and I sprayed on three coats of water-based polyurethane. And then when that was dry, I could bring them in and put them in the wall. Once again, if you've been watching my videos, you'll know that this front wall has a lot of this plywood with a lot of holes in it. I actually did all this in another video, if you saw that. This will all look very familiar to you. And this is really the only place in the wall that I can put them, one on one side and one on the other. So I need to take this panel off and remove the insulation from behind it, and that opens the space so that I can cut out the drywall that's on the other side of the wall. And it looks like it, but I didn't use the jigsaw for the drywall. I actually had to cut away some of the wood so that these new uh, baffles would fit in there. And speaking of which, here's the first one installed. And you can see the wire coming out beside the insulation. And I took that and I plugged it into the amplifier and listened to it. And wow, it was almost knocked over with the amount of bass that was coming from just these two woofers. Now that's all there is to that. Just mount the baffle in the wall and cut out the drywall behind so that it's completely open to the room that's behind that wall. But I do need to reinstall that holy diffuser beside it. And to do that, I need to cut it down to fit. So these are just plywood and they have cloth on the back. So the first thing I need to do is peel off some of that. I used staples and I also uh, glued it on just to make sure it wouldn't come off. And man, I really held on there. And then when I had that done, I had to pin on a guide strip because my holes are not actually parallel to the edge. They're on a slight angle. So I put that strip on there at that angle to go up against the fence. And I put on the other strip there just to hold the panel up to the correct height while I made the cut. Now 
And then when I had that done, I could take off those strips and use the strip that I cut off to line up the holes so that I could mark out exactly how much I need to cut off the panel. And here you can see how that lines up, and it looks pretty good. It's not a perfect match, but it'll do. And then the only thing left to do is to glue it on there and get it clamped up and let that dry, and then I can put it back in place. And while that was drying, I did the other side in the same way. And then I got around to actually testing it after listening to it for a little bit. And you can see the mic set up here on the stand. This is a near field response test. And that's what you're looking at right here. That yellow arrow is pointing to the crossover point for my subwoofer output on my receiver. And that's 80 hertz. And that measurement also gave me the step response, which looks pretty good. And then I moved on to actually integrating them into the room. And I did that with my measurement mic set up at the listening position tested the full output from the subwoofers and the main speakers and that's what you see right here before anything and this is not bad at all a little bit humped up below 20 but you know what I'd rather have bass to throw away in the room than not enough so then I took that response and I used that to set up a profile in equalizer APO and here's what that looks like after I finished optimizing that and then here, the green trace is the original, and the red trace is the equalized. My name is Max. My world is fire.